Hey folks and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Life is Strange True Colors on the Xbox Series S. Now the Xbox Series S gives you the option of either turning the ray tracing on or off. That's it. There's no performance mode on the Series S. There are no other video options to choose from. Now, originally when this game came out on all the consoles, it only offered a locked 30 FPS on all the consoles. But after a lot of, uh, you could say backlash or gamers complaining about it, the developers, they did take notice and they gave us all a 60 FPS patch in the month of October. But here's the bummer. It was only for the Series X and the PlayStation 5 and not for the Series S. So on the Series S, you are limited to 1440p and uh, that's at a locked 30 fps so on the playstation 5 and on the xbox series x you get two options that's a quality mode and uh, on this mode you have the game running at 30 fps in 4k and then you have a performance mode which runs at 60 fps but Here's the second bummer. That's only at 1080p. Now you heard that right. It's 1080p, not even 1440p at 60 FPS. I'm not sure why the developers chose this option. And um, I agree that this game looks pretty, but when a game like Gears or Control, when they can pull off a 1440p at 60 FPS, I fail to understand why a game like this cannot now, I believe that that is where the weirdness in the video options exists. So before I get in on what this game is about, like I do in all my videos, let me just sum up the options, sum up all the options, in fact, you have on the various next-gen consoles. Now, on the Xbox Series S, let's start off with that because I'm playing this game on the Xbox Series S. Again, this game runs at 1440p, at a locked 30 FPS with an option to turn ray tracing on or off. And even if you turn it off, the differences are so subtle that you really have to peep or you know peek in to figure out the differences in the shadows and the lighting, in the reflections, all of that. Now, even if you turn it off, I don't think there is going to be much of a difference. So, it's quite a weird option, you know, to have the ability to toggle on or off between the ray tracing mode. Now, I'm not even sure how it affects the performance because I don't think it really impacts the performance in any way on the Series S, even if you turn the ray tracing on. Like, I did not notice any frame drops or anything like that. So, again, this game looks pretty. I mean, it, it's a very beautiful game to look at. And as you can see on screen, look at that... Uh, that la landscape that you're looking at on screen, the um, level design, considering all of what you see on screen, I still believe that I have personally experienced more graphically intense games pull off a 1440p at 60 FPS. So I don't understand why this could not. Now, moving over from the Xbox Series S over to the PlayStation 5 and the Series X. Now, you have native 4K on the quality mode with ray tracing, but it's locked at 30 FPS. Now, you also have that questionable performance mode where you have the game running at 1080p, but that's at 60 FPS. Now, if you ask me personally, 60 FPS should not matter in a narrative-driven game like this. But really I'll admit that after playing a few titles in 60 FPS on my Series S, it's kind of tough going back to 30 FPS, but having said that, I will still stick to saying that in this game, I don't think it should matter. But since you have a 60 FPS option, what would have really made a difference is a 1440p at 60 FPS offered by the developers. Now, it's a bummer that that option does not exist. Okay. Now, so much for the video options in the game. I've already babbled too much about it. 
And uh, if you have any comments about what I've spoken about, about the performance mode, about the uh, quality mode, then uh, feel free to drop in a comment and let me know. And if you think that I've missed out on something, if you want to know about something, then you can let me know about those things as well in the comment section. Now, as always, let me give you some information about this game. Now, this game, well, it's a graphic adventure video game and it's developed by a company called Deck9. Now, it was published by Square Enix's uh, European <laughs> subsidiary. Now, originally, it came out on the 10th of September 2021. Now, they also released that patch update of 60 FPS. I believe it was in the month of October, if I'm not wrong, but I'm not so sure about that. If you do know about the uh, exact date, you can drop that uh, comment in the comment section. Now, it has been released on almost all the consoles that you can think of. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Series X, Series S. Um, PlayStation 5, and also on PC. Now, if I'm not wrong, this game was also released on the um, Nintendo Switch. So what this game is about is this uh, plot which focuses on this young woman, uh, I believe of Asian descent, if you go by how she looks. Now, her name is Alex Chen. Yes, even the, that, that surname, you know, that's an Asian surname. So now... You start off the game by playing Alex Chen. And uh, as this character, you know, you have some kind of powers. So what you can do is you can feel or you can experience the emotions of others. And uh, you will use these powers to kind of solve a mystery behind a tragedy that happened in your life as Alex Chen, that is. Now... As far as this Life is Strange series goes, now this is the fifth game in this Life is Strange series. And it's the third main installment. It's nice. And that's after Life is Strange 2. So it's kind of like, you know, you could say it spiritually succeeds Life is Strange 2. Now, unlike all those previous entries in the series, now this was released in its entirety while still being structured into chapters. So it received a lot of uh, positive or favorable comments and reviews from critics. And um, I can understand why, because the game has good story. The characters are uh, really good because you get invested in these characters straight away. Um, very strong storyline, a very nice way of telling that story, by the way. The voice acting is stellar. The facial animations is extremely good. And um, like any other you know, game out there, especially Life is Strange games, uh, you end up having these choices, these, these choices that come up on screen that you can choose from. And based on those choices, there is going to be a strong impact on the way this game plays out. So the reason why I said, you know, it's a graphic adventure is because it pretty much plays out like an interactive movie. And uh, it's a third person camera that you are um, viewing. So it's like a third person graphic adventure, you can say. What do I get for Charlotte? Sunflowers are her favorite. Now, there are a lot of um, areas where you'll have these cutscenes. So most of the times you will find yourselves just looking at these cutscenes and then at the end of those cutscenes, you know, you can choose these options that what, uh, come up on screen, like the one that you were seeing there. This time around, maybe now, I was thoroughly um, <laughs> impressed with the um, way the game plays, because if you've seen my channel, you know, I'm a big fan of these story driven, these narrative heavy games where you have a lot of story being told through cutscenes. So I don't mind that. But hey, if you are a person who likes more action, who likes more gameplay, then this game is not for you. Um, off late, I was playing Godfall on the Series S, and on Godfall, I noticed that uh, although there is a story, the story takes a backseat because I believe in a game like Godfall, the emphasis is actually on your gameplay rather than on your, uh, you could say, cutscenes or the story aspect. So if you like... A story-driven game, game, you're really going to enjoy this one because you are going to be invested in these characters. These characters are good. I mean, hey, take a look at how good they look on screen. Alex, she's beautifully designed. And um, 
the levels are beautifully designed as well. The presentation overall, it's all high quality, guys. I mean, you will not be disappointed from the quality perspective. That is. But speaking of quality, you know, that's where I have this disappointment with the game because I believe even on the Xbox Series S, they should have given an option of maybe 4K with ray tracing turned off. I'm sure Xbox Series S could have pulled that off because, hey, like I said, right at the start of uh, this game, games like Control, games like Gears, if they can pull off 1440p and 60 FPS, or if, um, you know, there are games, you know, which run on 4K on Xbox Series S, I'm sure a game like this could also run in 4K with ray tracing turned off, of course. Now, this um, Charlotte likes the uh, kind of games, these interactive movie kind of games, I tend to enjoy them. I um, don't know if you guys remember this game. Again, it was recently released. Recently, when I say, you know, recently, I mean the last six months. Man of Medan. Now, this was from that uh, anthology series where, you know, you are in this interactive horror movie game, you could say. I think the graphic was really good in that game. And that game, in terms of the storyline, also was yeah. very nice. It was impressive. So I kind of enjoyed that. No. Apart from this, you know, you if you have not played the game uh, Detroit Being Human, that also is very much like an interactive movie. So that looks really good. I mean, given the fact that it's so old, it still looks phenomenal even today. So that's what I fail to understand. You know, when games like that can pull off, you know, maybe giving you that high visual fidelity logged in at 30 fps no problems for a game like this but when games like that can pull off such a feat and that too on last gen consoles i fail to understand why this game could not <laughs> so that's my complaint or my disappointment with this game but apart from that i kind of enjoyed this game i played quite a lot of it and uh this game will keep you coming back for more is what i can say again this is that typical interactive movie, your typical Life is Strange game, you know, where you have to do a lot of reading, where you have to uh, um, look at a lot of things on screen and, um, yeah, do these, do, do these various things that uh, you're driven to do in the sense like, I wouldn't exactly call it uh, linear, I wouldn't exactly call it open world as well, because this is definitely not an open world game. It's leaning more towards that linear side of gameplay, you know, where you're constrained uh, step by step in these various environments and you have to solve that environment before you move on to the next. Now, in between those environments that you skip between, what I would call as, you know, levels, now you get to see these beautiful landscape of this town. Uh, this is Haven Springs in Colorado, I believe. Now, this is where you are catching up with your brother. So that's the other character in the game, uh, Gabe, Gabriel. Gabe is short for Gabriel. So you have Alex and Gabe who are, you could say the main characters in this game. So as far as the plot goes, um, as this character, Alex, now you're leaving a foster care group home after eight years. And that's to reunite or catch up with your brother. It's been a long time. And your brother is in Haven Springs in Colorado. That's where this beautiful place is. Now Gabe is trying to show you around uh, Haven Springs. And here he's just going to catch up with his girlfriend, whom he says he's going to introduce to Alex later on. Now you will come across various townspeople, and um, that's where your interaction with them will um, kind of make you understand what this game is about. Charlotte's my mom. Hi, Ethan. I'm Alex. So this is just one of those townspeople. Ethan, you have many others as well. You're going to meet a park ranger called Ryan. Uh, you're going to get a, a DJ called Steph. Uh, there's going to be a local bar owner. So I don't want to get too much into the details because uh, I don't want to give any spoilers as far as the story goes. I am going to talk about the plot just a little bit, but uh, not much because I would rather have you experience the game than me you know, giving away the entire story. 
so that's pretty much it i mean in 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 the sense as far as the uh, story goes uh, to begin this game with i mean the premise of this game is that uh, you are um, this character who's attempting to find answers about the circumstances around somebody's death i'm not going to say who i'm sure you're going to get that information online anyways but um, it's a murder mystery so there's a there's a mystery element to this game as well and using your powers which at the start of this video i told you know you can experience other people's emotions so you're going to use your power and um, you're going to uncover this mystery as to what happened what led to that person's death yeah so that is what this game is about now you'll go about various areas in the town talking to these various people you'll come across a lot of interesting characters um like i said you know there's the local bar owner there is the uh, flower shop owner that we just saw elinor uh, there is a uh, uh, sheriff deputy as well and uh you could say um there are other people as well like uh, i believe there's a some kind of a mining manager so all the ingredients of a typical you could say a murder mystery you know if you've seen that movie um oh, wow knives out or um even the uh, last movie that i saw you know murder on the nile i believe yeah so your typical characters in a murder mystery and you kind of interact with them and towards the end of the video game you get to find out so it's like a who done it kind of a setup you could say to buy us something to listen to now this game has been released by square enix if i haven't already mentioned that and um Square Enix is one of the most popular studios they make a lot of great games so when you hear that no name Square Enix you can immediately relate that name with high quality products so here in this case as well you know this is a high quality product i had nothing to complain about apart from the video modes the options that you get like performance or quality or you know the 60 and the 30 fps that's the only thing that i could actually complain about oh, uh, in this game apart from that if you are familiar with life is strange then you're going to feel right at home with this game because it's the same kind of a setup you go about the um this this town haven springs in colorado you meet the various people each location will have a mystery to solve or some activity to do and uh that's that's it i mean that's pretty much it if i have to really sum up the game now would i recommend this game to you of course yeah and what's even better is the fact that this is on game pass now it's on game pass ultimate guys so you don't even have to pay anything extra to get your hands on this game now try it if you've never played a life is strange you don't need to you can jump straight into this game because it's it's kind of in this own universe or in this own world you don't need to play any of the previous life is strange games jump right into it take a look at it i mean feel the game and then decide if you don't like it hey you didn't pay anything extra anyways you could just delete the game and move on now speaking of deleting the game now this is an x and an s exclusive game meaning that you will need to store this on the internal storage should you want to play it it cannot be played by storing this on an external hard drive so that's something to keep in mind while you're playing this game and um i really you know would again recommend that you do catch up with this game and play this game because you don't have anything to lose it's on game pass ultimate and you can simply download the game try it feel it and then take a decision whether you want to stay with this world with this with these characters you could say or not well you could say that now apart from that you know there there's so many other games you know which are continually coming out on game pass and that's why xbox well it kind of has an edge when it comes to uh, playstation with 
the Xbox Game Pass in mind. That's why I think, you know, PlayStation also in, initially, they didn't want to have a subscription which was similar to Game Pass, but now they're leaning more towards it. And I think we'll start seeing, you know, what that subscription can offer in just a month or two, maybe, you know, we'll get to find out all about it. I'm going to post, you know, um, a lot of information about that subscription, the PS subscription as well, as to how it compares to Xbox in my future videos as well. So stick around and you'll find out exactly, you know, what it offers. So I think that's it for this video, folks. Uh, let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And if you like this content, you can hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos. With that said, it's a wrap for this one. And I'll see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, I'll say happy gaming. Take care. Stay safe. And may God bless you all.